Collective behavior is ubiquitous. It's all around us, bird flocks, fish schools, ungulate herds, and it's also within us, the coordinated activity of our brains and the cells communicating in our body. And yet we still have only a very rudimentary understanding of both how and why animals coordinate collective behavior. And we're particularly interested in the aspects of information transmission and communication among individuals in animal collectives. This experiment was conducted in coastal Louisiana in the estuarine habitats of the Lower Mississippi River, near the confluence of the Gulf of Mexico. These estuarine habitats are characterized by shallow water depth, generally less than about a meter. They're highly productive ecosystems and characterized also by high turbidity. Now this high turbidity, of course, makes the use of optical methods quite difficult and a challenge for observing in situ interactions. So in response to this environmental constraint, we've employed a high frequency lens-based imaging sonar. It operates at nearly two megahertz. This instrument is called a Didson. In essence, it's an acoustic camera. And this camera allows us to observe behavioral interactions at high spatial and temporal resolution in situ. And these productive estuarine habitats also serve as important nursery and feeding grounds for many estuarine fishes. Notably in this experiment, the two dominant species observed were the voracious pisivore, the spotted sea trout, and their prey, the juvenile gulf menhaden, whose interactions we observed and report on in this paper. The highly dynamic interactions between these species make this a very interesting case for studying collective behavior. And using the sonar technology, we can see these interactions in high turbidity environments like ours. This video is from our sonar observations. We see groups of prey under attack from predators, and the prey is forming highly dynamic schools with clear evasive maneuvers. We also see how the predator causes disruptions and fragmentations in the prey schools. This interaction is what we are quantifying in our paper. This is a great data set, full of information, and we use multiple methods to extract it. After careful filtering of the images, we get an estimation of the positions of the fish. A simple convex hull is not appropriate for finding the boundaries of fish schools with irregular shapes. Instead, we use the alpha shape algorithm illustrated here to get a better estimation of the shape and area of each individual school. We estimate the velocity of the prey using optical flow a standard computer vision method. Since there are less predators and they are more visible, we track them manually and we estimate their velocities from the spline trajectories. We are particularly interested in the relationship between predator attack behavior and the capacity for prey to respond both directly to the predator and to other group members. We observe that typical attacks involve approaching prey from behind. Here we see the distribution of the nearest predator around a representative focal prey. The prey is located in the center of the plot, facing right. This figure shows the distribution and average direction of prey around predators. The predator is located in the center of the plot, facing right. The arrow shows the average direction of all prey surrounding the predator. Note that their prey are rarely closer than 20 cm to the predator. We are interested in the information transfer through the school, and in panel A, we see how far the prey's swimming velocity is correlated within a school. And in panel B, we show how these correlation lengths increase with increased group size, indicating that information transfer is more efficient in larger schools. We also show that the risk for individual prey, given as a school size divided by the number of close predators, is substantially higher for smaller schools. It is likely that the prey wants to maintain school size to reduce risk. How does predation affect prey schools? We show that higher predation is associated with increased fragmentation and irregularities in the spatial structure of the prey groups. This figure shows the nearest predator relative to another predator, and we see that the predators hunt in line formation. In summary, we provide evidence that coordinated predator hunting behavior inhibits the collective information transfer among prey. In this paper, we develop a new sonar technique to track fine-scale predator-prey interactions, we quantify information transfer and collective response in the field, and we show that predation is associated with reduced information transfer in prey skills.